Hello, I am back and today I'll be drawing a D&D character based on the roll of the dice. Let's bring out the Tower oh, of Destiny! So we have a Leonin Artificer, which to me conjured the image of a mad scientist with his mane all askew. So that's what I'm trying to make today. Uh, Leonin are kind of like tabaxi in that they are cat folk humanoid creatures, but Leonin are generally much bigger. I decided to make this one a little guy because I thought it would be funny. But normally Leonin are over six feet tall with some standing over seven feet. So their size is still medium though, but I wanted this one to be a little bit more like um, the in, in the spooky Halloween labs where you get the like tiny scientist man running around. I don't know. I just thought it'd be cute if I made him small and crazy. So yeah, as a Leonin, he also has traits such as dark vision, claws, which are your claws are your natural weapons. You can use them to make unarmed strikes. It deals a slashing damage of 1d4 plus your strength modifier. So that's pretty cool. You get hunter's instincts where you have proficiency in one of the following skills, athletics, intimidation, perception, or survival. You also have Daunting Roar, so as a bonus action you can let out an especially menacing roar and creatures of your choice within 10 feet of you that can hear you must succeed a wisdom saving throw or become frightened of you until the end of your next turn. So that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I haven't drawn a Leonin before and I thought it would be fun. Now, artificers have always confused me. I think it's because in the world of D&D, it's all very like medieval vibes and um, not really steampunk. Well, you, you get a lot of steampunk games, but it sort of doesn't feel like it meshes with the vibe of everything else. Um, most of it's very Lord of the Rings feeling, whereas this one's more like mortal instruments in terms of class uh, uh I'll, I'll just read i'll just read what it has on dnd beyond so artifice use artifices off to a great start artifices use a variety of tools to channel their arcane power to cast a spell an artificer might use an alchemist supplies to create a potent elixir calligraphers supplies to inscribe a sigil of power or tinker's tools to craft a temporary charm the magic of artificers is tied to their tools and their talents, and few other characters can produce the right tool for a job as well as an artificer. So they're basically engineers, and that feels too modern for a D&D setting unless you're playing in a more modern kind of vibe. Uh, most of my games usually do have a more modern setting, but I don't know, it just always throws me off. I should probably play as an artificer so I can really work out what they're all about. When I look at the class features of an artificer, the main thing that you get straight away is a magical tinkering ability. So at first level, you learn how to invest a spark of magic into mundane objects. Um, so the part, I guess the part that confuses me is I'm used to using spellcasters who they just cast a spell and the magic is done and that's it. Whereas this is, you sort of put the magic into something and then that you have a magical object, like the game is full of magic objects. So this is where those magic objects come from, I guess. And 
So playing one would be pretty fun in that you could probably create a lot of homebrew items, but also um, I suppose working with the DM, you could figure out how to make really hard to come by items or just really cool items. Like I know artificers can make the bag of holding, which is extremely useful and can be used for shenanigans in a whole host of ways. And yeah, there are different artificial, artificer, I can't even say the word, artificial, artificer specialist areas. So um, you can go the way of the alchemist, armorer, artillerist, or battlesmith. This one, this guy who I'm going to call Dr. Shemozzle, <laughs> Dr. Shemozzle is going down the alchemist route. Um, he's creating some crazy potions and um, some of the spells that you can learn when you're in the artificial artificer specialist area of alchemy is um, things like ray of sickness and flaming sphere, uh, blight, and raise dead if you get to level 17. So some pretty cool stuff in there and uh, they can, I, I like the gameplay idea of like experimenting with elix, elixirs and things where you could make one that say trying to be a healing spell, but it's not quite right. So it maybe has weird results that um, maybe they heal you a little bit, but not in the way you intended. Like if someone breaks an arm and you give them a healing potion that you made that's not quite right instead of healing the arm they grow another arm so they st they have two working arms but they have one that's still broken i think that would be hilarious now looking at his stats we've got i'm gonna go from the end, I'm gonna go backwards. Charisma is negative three, and I don't think that's surprising. He's clearly a hermit who spends all his time in his lab being weird and hissing at people who try to bother him, even if they are well intentioned and in trying to bring him food or something like that. He gets very much trapped in his own uh, bubble of genius or perhaps not genius because his wis well his wisdom's plus two which is very good but his intelligence is plus zero which is average so in that sort of case i think he has gained a bit of wisdom in his life he might have done other things before he became an artificer he um not necessarily D, &D class type things like he probably wasn't a druid or something beforehand but he might have grown amongst a varied society where a lot of different people were doing a lot of different things and he got to see all different walks of life and just learn how people are and you know wisdom he got he gained wisdom <laughs> before he went into his uh crazy mode i think probably something happened that made him snap uh I don't think that he's always been obsessed with uh, making potions or building magical objects or that sort of thing. I think this is kind of the like, perhaps a lost love. Someone died where they should have been able to be saved, but there weren't the resources available to make that happen. And so he's got a lot of wisdom but the intelligence he hasn't been studying a lot of books he doesn't retain knowledge that well his memories just no his memory's average he doesn't have negative intelligence he's not the worst at it but he hasn't exactly been a bookworm his whole life and uh constitution plus one dex plus one strength plus one so he's above average in these fields I think again it comes back to having lived a sort of full life before he got to this stage. I'm imagining he is quite an old character, um, sort of a, you know, crazy, not a crazy old wizard I was about to say, but <laughs> crazy old Leonin and uh, 
the kids in the village probably tell stories about him and um, say he's experimenting on naughty children and things like that and maybe he is we don't know because he never lets anyone into his lab uh, with strength and dexterity he obviously working alone will need to be able to lift heavy things and move heavy things and work with delicate objects like glass beakers and uh, yeah he's had enough experience doing things on his own that he has strength and dexterity that are a little bit above average. Now for his backstory, like we said, we, the royal we, like I said, I think he grew up relatively normal in a, in a normal village, uh, maybe a Leonin village, maybe it was mixed, it doesn't really matter, but he was living a pretty normal life, being a pretty normal guy, and fell in love, got married, uh, wanted to have some children maybe, and uh, disaster struck. Some evil came across the land and maybe it wasn't a monster, like in the world of D&D usually you can punch the bad things in the face, but maybe his beloved got sick and there wasn't a cure for the illness that he, she, or they had. Um, let's say she, because I'm going to say that she wanted to have children and maybe got pregnant, but then got sick and both died, which is enough to make anyone go absolutely top, top turning crazy. So he took his normal life and decided to dedicate himself to science in the aid of helping people, making sure this never happened to anyone ever again. He wants to heal people, he wants to make contraptions that help people in all different manner of ways. Um, and yeah, that's what brought him into the world of being an artificer. And if we're thinking about, say, a call to action, why he would stop his research and tinkering to join an adventuring party, or rather he would keep tinkering while he was part of the adventuring party. It could be exactly that. He needs more information. He needs to go out and find some special item, maybe an object, maybe a plant, something hard to get that he needs an adventuring group to join him, to help him. And maybe it's a quid pro quo situation where uh, he agrees to help the party with various things if they agree to help him to get this ingredient or maybe be his test subjects or something like that. I, I like the idea of him agreeing to go along with the group if they agree to try his potions or agree to try his um, new weapons to take down disease spreading monsters or whatever it is he's making they're the test bunnies uh, <laughs> I think that would be really interesting to play so yeah and I really wanted his mane to look appropriately disheveled I think I managed that <laughs> I don't know if I, at the end of the day, really like his face. I uh, did it front on. I probably could have made it a bit more interesting if I made it at the side from an angle or something. I do like that I made him a little guy. Uh, I wanted to have that sort of look of um, the big trench coat that's oversized and his little legs poking out the bottom. Um, but yeah, here we have the Leonin Artificer. Dr. Shamozzle. What do we think? What does everyone think of this character? Have you ever played an artificer? Have I misinterpreted anything about what they can do or what might inspire them? If so, let me know. Uh, obviously, it can be anything you want it to be, but in terms of the, the guidebook and the rules, I might have skimmed over a few key details that have eluded me. So yeah, let me know. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great week and I'll catch you next time. Bye.